I met Amanda at a Thanksgiving party at the Summit Recreation Center, where she's presiding over a group of over 100 volunteers and guests for a free Thanksgiving dinner. And this perfectly epitomizes her approach to life. She was born and raised in Summit, and she grew up at a time when Bridges and Family Promise and SHIP, great organizations in Summit, were just starting. Amanda went away from Summit, she grew up in Summit, to college at Randolph-Macon, same school that Pearl Buck attended. And she learned about community organizing. She did a lot of internships, White House, State Department, having been recognized early as a, as a promising leader. 17 years ago, roughly, she opened the community outreach office for New York City street homeless and underserved that was run by the Washington Square Methodist Church. There she created the acclaimed street sheets, which are a series of 10 booklets, food, hygiene, medical, legal housing, job skills, training services, which they made available to anyone without referral. Summit, her husband and her daughter came back to Summit nine years ago. And she continued her work in this sector. She was Bridges board chair, community vice president of the Virginia League of Summit. And she found a grace in 2016. Grace, she'll explain. It's not about the homeless. It's not about the destitute. It's about the many, many among us who need a little help to get by. They're working, but they can't quite swing it. And you and I probably understand that feeling. Your rent went up, and everything, you know, has gone up lately. Today, Grace serves an average of 400 families from the Summit community and per week with various forms of assistance. I should also mention that Union County recognized Amanda as one of the 2022 Women of Excellence. And now, Amanda. Thank you. What an incredible honor it is to speak with you today about Grace the organization. Um, it, first of all, GRACE is an acronym for giving and receiving assistance for our community's essentials. So let's start with that. But it's also the name of my 13-year-old daughter. <laughs> so 13 years ago, when I was trying to come up with a name for this incredible human, I'm proud to be her mother, I thought, how in the world do I deserve this incredible blessing? And then when I was creating this organization, I was thinking about how health, security, and belonging are everybody's birthright. So as Pete mentioned, I grew up in Summit. I was born at Overlook. I grew up in Summit during a time when ship and bridges and family promise were getting going. And there was a sense that we were all taught in school of summit is the land of plenty. Summit is generous. Summit is abundant. Summit can make anything happen. And I carried that with me when I never thought I'd return. <laughs> and yet uh, when I decided to as to where I really wanted to raise my daughter, she was born in Manhattan. I realized that I wanted to raise her in a community where there were the types of leaders, like those who started Bridges, if anyone here knows the wardens. I wanted her to be raised in a community where her uh, experiences and observations were deemed valid and where there was a community where ideas could flourish. Now, that leads us to Grace. So when I was serving as board chair of Bridges with 11 years of community activism and organizing under my belt, I was reading about the Summit community when we were focusing on Newark and Manhattan specifically. 
And the United Way published a report called When Working Doesn't Work. And in this report, it mentioned that 22%, and this was going back eight years ago, 22% of all summit households at that time could not afford all of the necessities of life. They had to make hard decisions between paying the rent, paying their utilities, putting gas in their car, and paying insurance, or buying essentials like medicine. I knew that there was need, but I had no idea that there was such a strong population of what's called asset-limited, income-constrained, and employed households. And I spoke with Bridges, and Bridges reestablished their mission of working with people who did not have secure housing. And I spoke with the Junior League of Summit, and they thought it was interesting but they told me just to go ahead and see what, what I could find. And that set me off on a year after my tours with, the, 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 with Bridges and with the Junior League of research and of creating uh, pilot phases. And so with this research, we went to community leaders. We went to the summit schools. We went to Overlook. We went to the Y, the Connection, the Department of Community Programs, SAGE, all of the places we believed where people in need would turn. And we understood it wasn't just lack of funds. It was lack of security. It was lack of the tools needed to be healthy, to be secure. And we knew we had to start with stabilizing the households. And not one to just sort of assume anything we interviewed a lot of people as to where the pain points were in the, uh, the disparity in income and indeed security. And what we realized were snow days were a specific hardship for working poor families. And that when kids would miss school meals and they'd be home when parents would be working, they'd be left home alone hungry. And so we started a program where school would know usually 12 hours in advance of calling a snow day. And we had the schools stocked with shelf stable food that children could bring home so that they could sustain themselves during a snow day. And April vacation was another time. It always falls on a different week because of the Easter and Passover holidays and families were always sort of caught without the December holiday doesn't necessarily work that way because it's a time of giving. It's a time of charity and people tend to receive a lot during that time. But April was a time when many families felt stranded. And so uh, for four years up until COVID, we supplied all children in the summit schools who received free or reduced priced meals a full array of groceries to last the week that would tide them over being that they wouldn't be able to get a school breakfast and school lunch. Speaking of which, there are only three schools within Summit who are a part of the breakfast program. And yet all of the schools have students who arrive hungry. And so, Seven years ago through now, we supply the summit schools with fresh fruit and other nutrient dense supplies for students who arrive hungry or become hungry or who need food to take home with them. What grace is about is gathering the community together and making sure that people have what they need to be full fledged members of our community. So the next pilot phase is the one that really launched us into where we stand today. And that is, there were five Mondays in August of that year, and we were given the keys to the Summit Recreation or Community Center, as it's known, or the Edison Rec, if you've been around for a while. And we announced that it was family fun night. Mondays were family fun night. 
and we promised activities that would get the children excited so the children would want to come so we had game night cooking night yoga dance to get the children and also to entice the parents who maybe were running low on funds in August with camp dwindling and then the need to pay for childcare and back to school expenses. And then, oh, by the way, while the children were having fun together, we set up a choice based fresh food pantry that looked like a farmer's market. And so people could come and we rescued produce from the Summit Farmers Market and they could make selections based on the things that their families most needed and most enjoyed to enhance their nutrient intake. And then at the end of August, after having so much fun together and having parents turn and say, I know that family. I didn't know that they were in the same financial boat as me. I didn't know that anyone else in this town where everyone seems to have was struggling like me. We served 30 families that August. And at the end of the month, I said, okay, I'm going to gather the data and figure out next steps. And the families pulled me aside and said, what am I going to do until you come back? I don't know how I'm going to put groceries on the table in September when I have to pay all of these back to school fees, uh, you, you know, the, the, the PTO and the sports and the new school shoes and the school supplies, it all adds up. And I turned to the Summit Interfaith Council, uh, Beacon uh, UU was my kind of my, my storage space at that time. And Central Presbyterian, and Christ Church came forward and offered to be our first two locations. In that fall, we had two distribution days because we wanted to understand what would work best for working families. So we had one weekend afternoon when we distributed uh, produce and other fresh foods, and we had one weekday evening. The weekend afternoon was at Central Presbyterian. The weekday evening was at Christ Church. Christ Church was also generous enough to give us a closet and half of their refrigerator, which we kind of took over. <laughs> and slowly but surely, we were off and running. When we started forming Grace, I was very reticent to really say we were a pantry because to be the kind of pantry that I knew we had to be, we had to be consistent. We had to be consistent in our hours of open of, of availability. We had to be consistent in the array that we offered, and we had to be consistent in the volume that we offered. Working with positively no budget whatsoever, that was a daunting task. But luckily, being that we started in September, six and a half years ago, we were able to take good advantage of the harvest season. And that gave us a, a very low cost start. So we were able to take a share of the rescued produce from the gift table at the Summit Farmers Market. And then SHIP took us under their wing and allowed us to um, go with them to the community food bank in Hillside. And then that took us into January of that next year. And we were then able to get some funding from the Summit Junior League, who made sure we had milk and eggs and produce that long winter. Uh, and from there, we grew. We thought we were doing really great at 35 families. And all of a sudden, we were at 45 families. And then um, we kept growing. And we needed to add a refrigerator, which the United Way um, provided for us. And then we needed another refrigerator. And then we looked around Christ Church and thought, we're kind of taking over. Uh, and may maybe, maybe we should look for other spaces. But because we've had this incredible partnership with the Department of Community Programs all along, we were offered the Cornog Fieldhouse space, which we share to this day. 
So from there, we moved to the Cornog Fieldhouse in October of 2019. We installed five professional-sized refrigerators, which would be the capacity of about 10 home-sized refrigerators. And we thought, we'll never grow into this space. The five professional-sized refrigerators held all of the food we would need to serve our then 75 families per week. That winter was a harsh one for our families, not for a reasons that for most people, the winter is harsh. Uh, the winter was harsh because there wasn't much snowfall. And because of that, there wasn't a lot of snow removal income. And so our 75 grew to 100 households. And from there, we also noticed a little thing called COVID. And so people would come to Grace at the Cornog Field House. It was then every Tuesday night. And they would arrive two hours in advance. And we would have everything set up to look like a farm stand. And for two hours, people would spend time together. And we had childcare. And we had piano lessons and art lessons for the children. And we had uh, healthcare professionals for health education and um, you know, medical checkups for the adults. We had empowerment seminars on tenants' rights and immigration and job skills training opportunities. And then we also had our fitness classes thanks to the Summit Area Y. And after one particularly great Zumba party, I looked around and thought, if COVID becomes novel in our community, we're going to be a hot spot. So I called our friends at Overlook Family Medicine and said, what do you think about COVID? Is this a real threat in our community? And they laughed and said, probably not. We don't have any novel cases, but if you're really worried, why don't you go to a socially distanced model and then reopen when the threat goes away? Well, things have never been the same. March of 2020, we went to a socially distanced model for our 100 households. And from that 100 households, the beginning of March 2020, we grew to 525 households by mid-April of 2020. And our numbers have fluctuated since then, but we are now since July of 2022, we have not seen a week lower than 500. In fact, last week we broke a record. We served 646 households in a single day. One week of groceries for 646 households. Now, when people come to Grace, as I mentioned before, we aim to be consistent. We want people to rely on us. And in having a meeting with a particularly visionary donor in 2020, of January of 2020, she said, if you could have, she asked, if she, you could have anything, what would you add to your array every week? And I asked for bathroom tissue, not realizing that supply chain challenges would definitely make that goal a lofty one. And we sat in her living room and she cut me a check for what we thought would be enough bathroom tissue for all of our families for an entire year. Well, it is lucky that we had that vision and that generosity because that lead kept us stocked in, in bathroom tissue and everything else. We have not skipped a week of bathroom tissue or milk or eggs or produce. We have not missed a week at all in six and a half years, but we've also been able to maintain consistent supply of everything for the people who come. Everyone who has ever come to Grace in our six and a half years has received. Now that does get a little precarious, but we'll talk more about that later. If you were to come to Grace, and I invite all of you as my guest, I won't even ask you to lift anything heavy. 
you'll notice that we have different almost I consider the monuments uh, to the generosity and the community support that makes grace happen. So if you arrive at Coronog anytime after 6.45 a.m. on a Thursday morning, you'll see six pallets of produce boxes. And those we receive courtesy of a grant from the USDA from a produce company. And that has an array of seasonal produce. And then if you come a little later in the morning, you'll see what we lovingly call Bag Mountain. Now, what could be Bag Mountain? What we realized during COVID was when we only offered produce, milk, eggs, and bathroom tissue, was that to shelter in place, a family would need a lot more to make a meal. And we've continued that since 2020. And so we provide nutrient-dense, shelf-stable groceries and personal care supplies every week as well. So when families come, every family we serve, they get a box of produce, a bag of shelf-stable items, personal care supplies, milk, eggs, and bread. Now the bread is really what's special. The bread come in, from donations from local bakeries. The best bakeries, the most exciting bakeries in town. Live Breads in Milburn and Natal's in Summit and Madison Bagel in Madison provide all of the bread we need to serve 500 plus households. And we, yeah, the best. <laughs> it's very exciting. And, yes? Right. So on, on Wednesdays, we bag the bread and, you know, maybe you want to take some home. <laughs> so come join us for the bread bagging on Wednesday mornings. Um, and so all of that is consistent and all of that is pretty even for all the people we serve. And those offerings go to the people who come in person and to the 200 summit only deliveries we make. Now to receive a delivery, families either have to have some kind of health crisis, could be episodic, it could be chronic. They have to have some sort of disability, some sort of work obligation, um, or some sort of transportation issue in order to receive a delivery from Grace. But every week we have about 25 volunteers who make those uh, 200 plus deliveries. And then we have our distribution that I really feel like you could set your watch to it because we, we do. <laughs> and so at 5.30 on a Thursday night, it doesn't matter the weather. We have operated in tropical storms. We have operated in the snow. We are now outside thanks to COVID. We have canopies. We have umbrellas, people come in need, and so we need to show up for them. And so when people come in person, they get that produce box, they get that bag of essentials. But then we've also returned to our choice-based model to add the other parts that a family might want. They then can select additional produce that would best serve them. They can then select maybe reading books for their children's homework and pleasure reading. They can select other household supplies. Maybe they need dish soap this week. Maybe they need fabric softener. But all of those things that make a life run more smoothly. And we've also been able to return to having our partners visit. And so on a regular basis, we have nutrition lessons. We have domestic violence advocacy. We have benefits assistance. We have trained volunteers to help with things like getting a driver's license, navigating all the paperwork before going to the motor vehicles. All of those things that help a family with their, 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 their sense of security. And then, as was mentioned earlier, we have other services to enhance the sense of belonging. Every season brings about different needs. Some of them are absolutely undisputable physical needs. We make sure everybody has a warm winter coat in November. 
prior to the cold setting in. Usually, sometimes we do get those freak snowstorms in October, but by, uh, by November, we make sure that everyone in the family has a warm winter coat. We also offer a flu shot clinic. Sequiris, uh, which is a company with, a, I believe an Australian company with a summit outpost, for four years now, they have donated enough flu vaccines to make sure that the entire Grace community is inoculated against the flu. And Summit Health Cares is the organization that administers the vaccines because the FDA won't just send me the flu vaccines. Uh, we work with all of these different organizations. We make sure that when somebody does need uh, medical attention, that Overlook um, the Community Health can get involved. If somebody needs legal representation, we have lawyers on hand uh, to make sure that people are getting the best guidance and counsel possible. And then we go through the season and we make sure that children have Valentines to give their friends in class because of course it's a class activity. And if a family can't afford it, the child is left out. The Easter Bunny comes to grace and make sure that children have a little something to celebrate that holiday. Uh, we have worked with the Summit Department of Community Programs to make the very exciting and alluring uh, Family Aquatic Center accessible to as many people as possible with days where it is open to all and events where people can come and cool off with their friends and neighbors. We offer back to school clothes support where if a family cannot afford back to school clothes, we ask our community for in good condition clothes for the children to start school. We have an enviable costume closet for Halloween to make sure that all children can celebrate Halloween, which is also part of the school day on Halloween. They have the Halloween parade. They have the class party. And if a child wants to be a part of that, we want them to feel that they are indeed a full-fledged member of their class and part of it. And then for the past two years, we have been honored to join the ranks of the Department of Community Programs and flag Frontline Appreciation Group in creating a Thanksgiving celebration for everyone, not just those in need, but for anyone who wants to come together and celebrate Thanksgiving as a community, we invite them. And the Frontline Appreciation Group has the funds to pay local businesses who then benefit to provide all of the turkey and the trimmings and we create a community gathering. Because if it's one thing that COVID has taken from us, it's the opportunity to gather, it's the opportunity to connect. And I have to say that this morning, being here with all of you, what an incredible group you all are, what incredible opportunity it is to come together as friends, as neighbors, as people interested in similar things. And we need more of that in our community. Times are tough. Uh, we have lost, I would say, close to 70 households within Summit due to uh, financial strain from COVID and from the rising costs of living. And then the double-edged sword, um, our operational costs have increased. Just last month, making sure that everyone who comes to us in need and expects a dozen eggs, that they still receive those dozen eggs. We get better than wholesale prices for things like milk and eggs and produce when we need to supplement. And last month, eggs cost $5.80. And if I'm budgeting for 550 households, you can see what a budget breaker that is. And yet, thanks to individual donations and thanks to some grants that we've had, we've been able to be consistent. It really is a, a patchwork quilt 
of how we make sure that our people have every single week. We work with the community food bank in Hillside. They tell us what's available, what we can get by delivery, the shelf stable, the fresh food. And then of course, garden, you know, Jersey fresh garden produce from the Summit Farmers Market, from the Summit Achieve Community Garden. And they actually have plots dedicated to grace based on what our community members value. We try to be as culturally relevant as possible. And what we've learned is that, especially for people who come from warmer climates, they consistently expect the leafy green vegetables, the array of fresh fruit, the peppers and tomatoes. And we've had to explain that there are some months, especially right now in the growing season, where it looks a little bit more like potatoes and onions and cabbage but uh, we've definitely helped with some recipes to, to make those into family favorites as well. So with Grace, it's, it really is about our people. So last year alone, we distributed 24,377 loads of groceries in the year. The demand is growing. Uh, our need for volunteers is growing. Uh, last month alone, we averaged 173 volunteer hours per week just for our weekly distribution. And we have the same number of volunteers. It's just we've had to dig a little deeper. We've had to commit a little bit more because we understand that the need is only going to grow. The budget that would have covered someone for a week of groceries no longer does. Most of our families are not just employed, but the adults have more than one job. They are working as hard as humanly possible to make ends meet. High school students are now trying to be gainfully employed to support their households. And they're turning to school administrators and wondering how they can finish their high school experience with a diploma instead of working full time. And we're working with Summit Schools to come up with ways to support students where they can have job skills training with a stipend so they can still go to school and so that their work experience counts for their future goals. But really what we're about is that our community is great, but our community is great because we support each other. And when we support each other, it's to make sure that we, are all, that we all have what we need, what we all have what we need to survive. We all have what we need to be our healthy selves and to achieve our goals. But what we also have in order to feel that we belong in this community. And when people come to Grace, the line can get a little blurry as to who is receiving and who is giving, hence our giving and receiving assistance, because we're all part of the community to make sure of our mutual success. And we can only make Grace happen thanks to our community. Okay. We, we have a, a, a short video. Oh. stands for giving and receiving assistance for our community's essentials. Simply put, any need that exists in our community, we intend to fill either by physically giving someone an item or making a connection in order to solve a problem. Grace started six years ago with the idea that there is a whole population within our community who have unmet needs mostly people who are what would be called working poor. They lack the assets in order to stabilize their lives, even if they're working. In the time of COVID, we went from serving 100 households a week to more than 500, actually 525 households a week, 
we now serve an average of 400 households a week. And we don't see that rate slowing down, even though our uh, community members have essentially returned to work. They still have bills that they need to pay. Their needs are more complex. Some of them are still recovering from COVID because they could not shelter in place. They had to still go out and work. And so everything really centers around our Thursday evening distribution, even though we are so much more than that. And even though Grace is uh, many more days in a week than Thursday nights. But when people come, they receive from us a bag of fresh, nutrient dense food. So that's an array of produce for all the meals in a day. That is bathroom tissue, that is milk, that is eggs. And for those who come to us, people can make all kinds of choices so that indeed they were reflecting the desires and the cultural values that were intrinsic to them. The household cleaning supplies that they need, the period supplies that they prefer, and then some other little extras that are indeed necessities that might be outside of their budget. Tonight we have books, we have board games for quiet family time away from the screen, and we have bike helmets because we've noticed that a lot of our community members are indeed out and about and enjoying the great outdoors with friends, which is exactly what we hope everyone will do. But sometimes the protective equipment is indeed outside of what they can afford. And so what we really aspire to do is we have a community. We care well for one another. And with that, on an individual basis and by understanding and communicating with our community, we reflect their needs with our offerings. And when we aren't the answer, which can often happen, we make sure to connect people with what they need. We can only do this with the incredible support of the City of Summit and the Department of Community Programs. GRACE is an official program of the Department of Community Programs. And it is because of that that we can work out of this beautiful building in the heart of Summit. They provide all kinds of guidance and transportation and manpower and they are the force that first acknowledged the issue that we saw as grace and they were the first to open their doors to us at the community center where we had our first food distribution under the auspices of the family fun night and then that site became our second location which is now a community vaccination center and so we are here to be the best neighbors that we can be and we are here to really rejoice in community. Thank you, thank you, thank you for what is an, obviously a great need being satisfied in our community uh, and what a wonderful way you do it. Thank you so very much. Let me just remind you uh, that questions uh, that you want to ask should focus on the topic that she's presented. Uh, your questions should be less than a minute in length or duration, and you should not ask about your own personal circumstances. With that, I turn it over to Pete, who will manage the Q&A session. Uh, thank you. Does anyone have any well, thank you. I, from Morris County, I worked uh, and volunteered for Interfaith Food Pantry. Wonderful. Right. So one thing that you did not uh, do a good job is tell people where to donate money. Now, do you have a website that they can go to? Yes, indeed. So gracegivingreceiving.org is our website, and there is a link right there to donate. Mitch. Hey, Amanda, thank you so much. Uh, people who live, say, I don't know, New, New Brunswick, you mentioned you're from Summit. <laughs> And they say, oh, and all they think about is the million dollar homes, the multi, multi, multi million dollar homes. Uh, give us a little bit of the demographics of Summit that make you your grace needed. So eight years ago, the United Way said that 22 percent of all Summit households could not make ends meet. By September of 2019, they updated that number to 25% of all households could not make ends meet. 
And unfortunately, there hasn't been money in the budget to study what the percentage is now. But what I can tell you is that of those families who come to Grace, 72% reside in Summit and make up about 10 to 12% of the Summit population. So thank you. Uh, thank you for the great job that you do and you do it, you make the presentation so very well. My question is, do some families graduate? Yes. And you know, in, in no longer need your help and perhaps become volunteers or uh, donors themselves? We absolutely have families who are still part of our community, but have indeed switched sides. Um, when we started, in fact, I'll tell you a little story that will get to that point. Um, we had a mo single mother who was in nursing school. And she had a little daughter who took a, a who had a nutrition class in school. And they went to ShopRite and she learned in school that she needed to eat the rainbow to be healthy. So they were in the produce section of ShopRite, and the little girl is putting in all of the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet foods into the cart. The mother turns around and looks at her daughter and says, we can't afford all of this. And the little girl starts crying because she said that's how her teacher said she's going to be healthy. That same year, we launched and they were able to eat the rainbow. The mother graduated from nursing school and is now gainfully employed. They donate to us. They volunteer with us. And indeed, they are a success story. What I will tell you is that about a quarter of the people who come in need, it is truly temporary. It is a family recovering because of a large car repair or um, a furlough or something like that. But for families who lose more than three paychecks, it takes 18 months to recover unless there's another financial hardship. Well, due to COVID, many households sustained loss of more than three paychecks and more hardships, especially with the rising costs of living. And so it's becoming harder and harder to find their financial stability. Hi, Paul. Hi, Amanda. I'm here at home, I had a negative COVID test this morning, so I'm on the mat. <laughs> um, really? So this is such a wonderful story, so inspirational, and it's so impressive. Well, first of all, to find out how much need there is in our own affluent community and to see how effectively you and your people are, are filling that need. It's just, it's just truly astounding, and it's wonderful. And so let me ask you just one question. Could you say a little bit more about your cadre of volunteers? Like how many are, are they? Are they mostly students? Where do they come from? Are there any local organizations that sort of partner with you and get people to show up? You know, tell us about them. Absolutely. So our volunteers run the, the, the gamut in terms of ages and abilities. And we truly believe that anyone who would like to come and help, we will find them a job that works for them. And so what that means is, yes, when you come to our distribution, you will see a lot of very young, strong individuals. We give on average 44 pounds of food and supplies to every household every week, not counting all of the additional choice items. That is a lot to haul and people need help getting it back to their vehicles. But what is also true is that we welcome everyone. And so we work with the Summit Schools with their job skills training program for special education students, both at the high school and post 12th grade programs. We work with people who are recovering after a stroke, getting their dexterity back, bagging bread. We work with individuals who would prefer smaller, more quiet activities like sorting donations. We need all kinds of help. We need drivers to make those donations, uh, donation deliveries. We need uh, people who can keep our, help us keep our paperwork. We need people who are well-versed in what to do with some of the more 
exotic Jersey fresh produce that we get in the summer and fall months. When we get garlic scapes, what do you do with those? When we get yellow cauliflower, reassuring someone who's never seen it that indeed it can be something that their family will enjoy. Um, and then for those who tend their own gardens, if they have surplus, we definitely appreciate that as well. But every person, every gift we need, uh, we, we love a car line concert when we have distribution for music groups to come and to serenade our volunteers and our community members. We, we need it all. We need business mentors. We need job skills coaches. We need a uh, parenting, you know, help <laughs> as everyone does. And, you know, in our community, all of this is available but usually at a cost. And so how we can take what we know and some of the wisdom that we've earned the hard way and supporting our community is something that we aspire to do a lot more of at Grace. Don't have any questions. I have a couple comments. You have a job training program apparently for high school children or I don't know if you know about it, but Landron Hill hires high school people, okay. train them to, to serve in, in the three restaurants they have. Um, it might be something to look into. I will definitely look into that immediately. <laughs> the second thing I wanna say is when you were introduced and your name is Amanda, it immediately brings me back to a song that probably is one of my favorites. I don't know if you ever heard it. It's by Waylon Jennings. It's a maybe 25 years old, but it doesn't sound like a country Western. Have you ever heard it? I don't think I. Okay. Listen to it someday. Yes. I'm... Because one of the lines is you're the light of my life. And I think that you probably are for an awful lot of people, a wonderful speaker. Ken, I mean, why don't you sing it? <laughs> I, I don't think you really want to hear me sing it. I think that. But 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 as I listen to you, you really are the light of a lot of people's life. And maybe you ought to listen to it. Thank you. Our community lights up my life. Our, our truly some of my best friends in the world have come from working at Grace. Uh, last night I had a, a board meeting. And when you want to find the most talented, the most generous, the most intelligently compassionate individuals, visit my website, check out my board, because truly some of the best of Summit are there. And half of them grew up here. So it truly is homegrown, compassionate talent. Thank you so much. Yes, quick question. If we have items at home, uh, use clothing, board games, books, uh, things of that nature. Is there some place that we could bring them? In? Yes. So board games, we will just take. Um, books, well, don't, I shouldn't say that because when I say books, all of a sudden I have a room full of books. Uh, <laughs> but board games, we will just take. Other items, I would ask that someone text me a picture. I find a recipient and I connect the recipient with the donor because I don't know if any of you are familiar with the Cornog Fieldhouse. Maybe, maybe some of you went to kindergarten there. Maybe some of you played football and changed into your uniforms there. Um, I went to Girl Scouts there. I, I did not know that it was the space that it was, but it's not very spacious for storage. Um, and so I have to make some direct connections, but I'm, I'm happy to do so. And that's just it. Most things that, that are in good condition that people want to give away, uh, pans, uh, air conditioners, fans, um, coats, things like that, I can give away pretty much instantly. Thank you. I'd just like to make a comment rather than a question. A month ago, one of my guests was Martin Cox from Plainfield. He's involved in similar work in Plainfield to Amanda. His comment was that this program is the best one he knows anywhere. Well, I'm a Mark Martin Cox super fan as well, because he is someone who for decades now 
has donated his time and marshaled resources for people to live a healthy and fulfilling life. And I am so grateful to him for his partnership and support. Thank you. Um, uh, it, uh, this is actually a follow-up to Mike Bennett's question a few moments ago. He's the guy with the English accent. Um, <laughs> and that is this. What's so obvious to me, uh, seeing all of this, is that Summit is not unique. There are plenty of affluent communities in this nation that have plenty of um, people with economic problems and food insecurity and can't make ends meet. And, and Amanda, you've been getting a lot of recognition lately for your amazing success. So I'm wondering whether by now people from other communities are coming and knocking on your door to get coached on how they might start similar programs. And also whether, you know, even, even Grace itself, I mean, I guess you've trademarked the name or something, and maybe Grace will ultimately replicate itself around in other communities or, you know, a franchise or something. So anyway, talk about that. Yes. Uh, that that is the short answer. So we do. I do get calls regularly. I've gotten calls from Berkeley Heights, from Cranford, um, from towns down the shore, and I always start by asking, "Have you done an assessment of your community?" I understand that, of course, there is um, the asset limited, income constrained, employed part of your community. We can all agree to that. But what are their pain points? Where do they need the support? Can you please do that assessment and come back and we will discuss how to best roll out a program for you? No one has taken me up on that offer yet. <laughs> uh, one group from Berkeley Heights did shadow us for a month and they saw what heavy labor it is to distribute 16,000 pounds of fresh food in a day and they felt that they did not have the volunteer manpower to achieve what they thought they might have to achieve. Um, I, I truly believe that in any community, there is that physical and emotional strength in order to make sure that all needs can be met. But it's just a matter of going through the channels to identify how that can be. This could be a high school service project. This could be something for retirees to launch onto. This could be something that if you schedule it right, that moms can do when kids are at school. There's so many different ways to make it work. But first, there has to be that acknowledgement of I'm going to ask all the questions to make sure I understand the scene before I launch myself into it. And uh, being that I consider myself to know Summit pretty well, though I'm still learning every day, I would never assume about anything about another community. And I would want for a community that is preparing itself for outreach to do that necessary due diligence. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, I hope I hope the idea does spread and uh, and spearheaded by the inspiration they get from Grace. That's great. Thank you very much. Amanda needs to get to that council meeting and in, in summit. Oh, yeah. And we have a whole list of things to do right now. Summit is famous for orchids. They used to be famous for orchids. Back before you were born, men from Summit went to the Amazon, went to the tropics, mailed orchids back to Summit to the great growing areas here in wet newspapers. And I have a history of all of them. Oh, sure. My pleasure to hold it back. This is a history of Summit and orchids, and it'll make a great project yeah. for your kids. This is some of this heartfelt contribution in recognition of your effort that they've just given me. And we have a certificate. I'm supposed to hold, here it is, a certificate of appreciation to you. And it features the orchid, which has become our symbol. In 1930, when we were founded, Summit was a leading orchid center for the whole country. It's interesting. Yes, I had no idea. See, learning something new about Summit every day. And 
have some orchids for you. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And thank you so very, very much. You're a real honor and an old guard salute.